Terra Shedinja, Pokemon Gimmick number 21, by Elo Bandit. This strategy is for Scarlet and Violet National Decks Anything Goes, a metagame that includes every Pokemon from Gens 1 through 9 and all generational mechanics, except for Dynamax. This means players are allowed one Terrestrialization per game, one Mega Evolution per game, and one Z-Move per game. A Pokemon holding a Megastone or Z-Crystal cannot change its type with Terra. We play in National Dex AG because it's the only tier Shedinja is not banned from. The basic version of Terra Shedinja requires very little setup. Choice Scarf Cyclozar immediately passes a Shed Tail substitute to Shedinja, so it can ignore all the status moves like Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, and Leech Seed that normally threaten it. Shedinja conveniently ignores the Dragon, Fairy, Ice, and Fighting type attacks aimed at Cyclozar. On the second turn of battle, Shedinja terastalizes to the Electric type. Electric is only weak to ground, and Air Balloon lets it avoid ground attacks. With this simple maneuver, Shedinja effectively becomes immune to every type. Shedinja can then safely Swords Dance up to max attack, and sweep opponents with Poltergeist and Secret Power. Ghost and Normal offers great neutral coverage that doesn't make contact against Rocky Helmet, Iron Barbs, or Rough Skin. And Toxic is used to shred through anything that can stand up to max attack Shedinja. So what threatens the Cyclozar and Shedinja combo? The threat list includes attacks and abilities that ignore Shedinja's immunities. Sunsteel Strike from Necrozma Duskmane and Solgaleo, Moongeist Beam from Necrozma Dawnwings and Lunala, Photon Geyser, and a unique Z-move for every Necrozma form, all these moves ignore Wonder Guard. The ability-ignoring abilities, Moldbreaker, Terravolt, and Turbo Blaze, rip straight through Shedinja. Attacks from Excadrill, Mega Gyarados, Zekrom, Curum Black, Reshiram, and Curum White will all threaten it. Zygarde's Thousand Arrows pops Electric Shedinja's Air Balloon as it breaks Substitute, then KOs it the following turn. Shedinja has to watch out for Sand, Hail, Ghost-type Curse, Parish Song, Infiltrator Status, Leech Seed, and Struggle Inducers. Stealth Rock combined with Whirlwind or Roar threatens to knock out Shedinja, and Prankster Assist teams can stall out turns indefinitely. The advanced version of the gimmick addresses all these weaknesses. The team is composed of Shedinja, Cyclozar, Ho-Oh, Mega Gengar, Gothitelle, and Tyranitar. Shedinja trades out its air balloon for a shiny pair of heavy-duty boots, letting it ignore all damage from hazards. Boots are by far the best item for Shedinja, as any other item requires extra hazard control to help mitigate Shedinja's highly exploitable weakness to Stealth Rock. Shedinja can fulfill many roles on the team using this moveset. Toxic and Poltergeist are basically mandatory to push the game forward by dealing damage as safely and efficiently as possible. Maximum attack EVs power up Poltergeist, while minimum defense IVs reduce the effectiveness of opposing dittos. Hone Claws is chosen over Swords Dance because of its compatibility with Baton Pass, which is arguably Shedinja's most important move on the set. When opponents see Shedinja, their first instinct is to pivot into their best Shedinja counter. Their switch is met with a Baton Pass into a Shadow Tag Pokemon, and their threat is trapped and knocked out. Shedinja comes in again later, and the opponent no longer has that response available to deal with it. Shedinja Baton Passes again until it can happily wall the rest of the opposing team with its chosen Terra type. Generally speaking, you want to hold on to your terrestrialization until you can draw out and trap Shedinja's counters. When you've disposed of all the threats to Shedinja's hidden type, it can terrestrialize into the perfect wall. Alternatively, you can choose to Terra early in the match, trying to draw in a specific type counter and Baton Pass out to trap it. A terrestrialized Shedinja is more effective as a pivot than a Ghost Bug Shedinja, so an early Terra can be helpful against Pokemon like Mega Rayquaza and Mariadon. Normal Terra Shedinja is only weak to Fighting-type attacks. It has to watch out for Collision Course, Close Combat, Aura Sphere, Low Kick, and Sacred Sword, among other moves. Once the team dispatches opposing Fighting types with Trappers, Toxic, or other methods, Shedinja is free to set up and finish the game. Normal Terra is Shedinja's easiest to use and most straightforward option, since Ho-Oh, Gothitelle, and Mega Gengar can all switch in easily on Fighting-type attacks. Electric Terra Shedinja is only weak to ground coverage, Earthquake, Earth Power, Precipice Blades, and Thousand Arrows. Most Pokemon that run ground coverage are pretty easy to trap with Gothitelle and switch in on with Ho-Oh, making Electric one of Shedinja's best Terra types. If you really want to use Air Balloon on Electric Shedinja to avoid ground attacks, you accept a significant weakness to hazards. Stealth Rocks immediately KO you, and Spikes and Toxic Spikes ruin your day if your Air Balloon is ever popped. Your team becomes very weak to phasing, and you have to run additional Rapid Spin and Defog support to make this build work. Poison Terra Shedinja is very similar to Electric Boots Shedinja, 
It shares the ground type weakness and accepts one additional psychic type weakness. However, it gains an immunity to the move Toxic, which is often a team's only answer to Terra Shedinja. As a poison type, Shedinja always lands Toxics of its own. In theory, you could run Air Balloon or Safety Goggles on Poison Terra Shedinja, as long as you shadow tag opposing Zygarde's, Psychic types, and Stealth Rock users. Gothitelle can effectively switch in on and trap most Psychic and Ground types, while Mega Gengar usually can't take a hit, but can often find revenge kills. Ground Terra Shedinja has three weaknesses, Ice, Water, and Grass, but it does have an immunity to Sandstorm, which eases the Tyranitar matchup. Ground Shedinja pairs well with its own Sandstream Tyranitar, or uses Sandstorm itself in place of Toxic or Hone Claws. Luckily, Grass is not a common type in Nat Dex AG, so your trappers mostly need to worry about Ice and Water attackers. Water Terra Shedinja is often overlooked, but it's perfectly viable in a tier with so few Grass types. The big threat will be Electric types, and these sometimes take a little bit of brain power to remove, since they often outspeed your trappers. The plus side is Shedinja can often wall Electric types pre-terrestrialization. Once you drop the opposing electric coverage, Water Shedinja is an extremely effective wall. Last but not least, Fairy Terra Shedinja does a brilliant job standing up to the popular Dragon, Ground, and Water types of Nat Dex AG. Steel and Poison attackers are relatively uncommon in the tier, aside from a couple exceptions like Behemoth Blade, Flash Cannon, Sludge Wave, and Poison Jab. It's not too difficult to scout out your opponent's one or two super effective moves and delete them from the game with your trappers. Cyclozar is Shedinja's most important teammate, and it functions as a lead in 90% of games. Cyclozar's role is to pass as many Shedtail substitutes as possible to Shedinja and its other allies over the course of a match. Maximum HP and 136 defense EVs provide the bulkiest possible Shedtail subs and ensure Cyclozar doesn't lose half its HP against Adamant Mega Rayquaza's Extreme Speed if it doesn't have a Life Orb or Choice Band. 116 speed investment with a choice scarf puts Cyclozar just above Deox's speed, outpacing the entire unboosted metagame aside from Regieleki. U-Turn combined with Regenerator lets Cyclozar stay healthy throughout a game despite Shedtail's HP cost, and can be used against extreme speeders to scout for boosting items. Knockoff has incredible utility. It removes obnoxious items, snipes unsuspecting Caleric's shadow, and chips away at everything else. In the last slot, Draco Meteor is typically chosen for its potential to take a chunk out of the ability ignoring legendary dragons. Overheat is preferred if you're using Fairy Shedinja to hit the steel types that pose an increased threat. Crunch is the best option to break down stall Pokemon like Mega Sableye, Giratina, and Chansey over the course of a match. Rapid Spin should really only be paired with Air Balloon or Safety Goggles Shedinja, as Heavy Duty Boots Shedinja doesn't really need the extra spin support, and Ho-Oh is just better at hazard control with its superior bulk. The Terra type generally doesn't come into play because Shedinja prefers to use the team's Terra, but you can Terra Dragon for a larger Draco Meteor if your opponent's only Shedinja check is that one Terra Volt Dragon. Terra Dark is chosen if you don't have Draco Meteor to power up knockoff, and prevent Prankster status from interrupting Shed Tail. Some people prefer recovery items on Cyclozar, but you really don't need them, as U-Turn plus Regenerator is more than enough recovery, and Choice Scarf provides way more value in a tier with all the fastest Pokemon allowed. Ho-Oh is an ideal pivot to pair with Terra Shedinja. It switches in to eat up the fighting, ground, grass, steel, and ability-ignoring attacks aimed at Shedinja, and burns, toxics, or whirls them out. Ho-Oh stays alive throughout a match with its enormous mixed bulk and regenerator, which keeps it comfortably healthy through a game even without roost. Heavy duty boots negate its otherwise devastating stealth rock weakness and allow Ho-Oh to act as reliable hazard control for the team with defog. Whirlwind is utilized to phase away opposing setup, while Sacred Fire threatens steel types like Necrozma Dustmane and Ferrothorn. Toxic puts opponents on a timer as they fail to outdamage the regenerator core Ho-Oh completes with Cyclozar. Terra Ghost is chosen, so Ho-Oh can escape Shadow Tag users in a pinch, though typically Shedinja will use the team's terrestrialization if possible. In order to use Shedinja safely, we have to trap and remove the ability ignorers that threaten it. Shadow Tag Mega Gengar is the best trapper in the game, with fully invested 130 base speed. It can set up a substitute, disable the move that breaks substitute, encore the disabled move, and force two turns of struggle as it substitutes again. 252 Special Attack Shadow Ball nails Necrozma forms and reduces the number of struggles opponents get to land before going down. Do not switch Shedinja in on a struggle, as Wonder Guard does not block it. 
instead, bring in Cyclozar or Ho-Oh on the turn, a low HP struggler has to knock themselves out. Your other options are Perish Song and Haze, but I strongly prefer the Encore Disable Struggle Inducing set. Note that as a Mega Pokemon, Gengar is the only member of this team that can't Terrastalize. I recommend bringing Gengar in as soon as possible, with or without a Shed Tail substitute, so it can Mega Evolve early and gain access to Shadow Tag. Gothitelle is the second best trapper in the game, beating out Doug Trio, which can't trap flying types or knock out HP invested Necrozma Duskmane. Gothitelle walls physical attackers like Necrozma DM, Necrozma Ultra, Curum Black, and Tyranitar that threaten Shedinja. Bold, powerpoint stall Gothitelle, with the pacifist combo of Taunt, Charm, Rest, and Cosmic Power, simply spams its status move against attackers until they struggle to death. Charm handles physical boosters, and Cosmic Power helps Gothitelle bulk special hits, and increases its defense as further insurance against critical hits. Sure, a crit does 80, but you get leftovers recovery and the next attack only does 4. Just make sure to rest after every crit, and try not to get crit twice. In games where it seems worth it, Gothitelle can Terra Dark to eat up a Psychic or Ghost move. Stall Gothitelle may add an extra 60 or so moves to a game, but it's worth it to trap the biggest threats to Shedinja as reliably as possible. Our final trapper is Tyranitar with Stab Pursuit. Pursuit nails important Ghost and Psychic types as they try to escape. Specifically, Tyranitar traps Caleric's Shadow, Mega Gengar, Lunala, Necrozma, Mewtwo, Dragapult, and Arceus Ghost. Maximum Special Bulk, Leftovers, and Rock Blast ensure that Tyranitar wins even against Leech Seed Substitute Cleric Shadow, which is otherwise a big threat to this team. Thunder Wave. What? Thunder Wave! And Toxic. Double Status Tyranitar paralyzes Necrozma Duskmane and other Steels, while spreading Toxic to any other threats to Shedinja. The only move I would use over Thunder Wave is Rest for increased longevity, as the team doesn't benefit much from rocks or physical coverage, and far prefers the utility of Toxic and T-Wave. Just like Ho-Oh, Tyranitar uses Terra Ghost to escape from opposing Gothitelle if necessary. The next best option is Terra Flying to avoid an incoming Earthquake or Precipice Blades. Unnerve is used most of the time, despite the low usage of berries. Setting Sand is pretty detrimental to Shedinja teams, especially if you're against any phasing moves. The exception, of course, is Terra Ground Shedinja, which pairs extremely well with Sandstream Tyranitar. Every Pokemon on this team is built to flow into one another. Cyclozar leads off and passes substitutes not only to Shedinja, but to every team member. Ho-Oh loves the sub to scout out rock moves, Mega Gengar appreciates the free turn to Mega and Shadow Ball, Gothitelle gets a charm off from behind a sub against the strongest Z-move users, and Tyranitar can fire off status without worrying about surprise fighting coverage. Shedinja typically baton passes out to Mega Gengar and Gothitelle, or to Tyranitar against Ghosts. However, there's also merit to baton passing back to your regenerator Cyclozar and Ho-Oh, restoring their HP before doubling back out to Shedinja and baton passing again. Ho-Oh is a wonderful all-purpose damage sponge for the team, letting its frailer allies escape to safety. It has incredible type synergy with every team member due to its key resistances and immunities. Avoiding ground and resisting fighting in steel is huge for this team. Mega Gengar traps nearly anything that could damage his little buddy Shedinja by inducing struggles. If Shedinja does go down, Mega Gengar transitions to the role of a late game cleaner with Shadow Ball. If Mega Gengar is copied by a Ditto, it can always safely swap out to Cyclozar, which is immune to Shadow Ball as a normal type. The two Shadow Tag Pokemon can form a trapping unit, where Mega Gengar can force struggles for Gothitelle to Cosmic Power on, or Gothitelle can charm a physical attacker down to Mega Gengar's comfort level. Gothitelle has surprising bulk with even a single cosmic power, and can potentially rest stall even some special attackers for the team. Every ally benefits from a toxic opponent or a paralyzed steel or poison type courtesy of Tyranitar. Players using Caleric Shadow typically have Astral Barrage, Psyshock, and Leech Seed, which is quite hard for the Pokemon on this team to switch into except for Tyranitar, which busts it with Pursuit. If you lose Tyranitar, your hope lies in knocking out Caleric's S with clever switches and attacks, with knockoff Cyclozar, Poltergeist Shedinja, and Whirlwind Ho-Oh. Terra Shedinja naturally ties against Revive Cats, since Lipard teams have no way to break a Regenerator Core plus a Terrastalized Shedinja. However, Shedinja can't really find a win either. 
any gameplay other than constant regenerator switching, loses power points against the unending army of cats, and leads to an eventual death via struggle. So, both teams switch back and forth for between a hundred and a thousand turns, two immovable objects unable to deal any lasting damage to each other. To escape the draw and find a win against revive cats, you're forced to weaken your Caleric Shadow matchup by trading out Tyranitar for a different Pokemon. Swapping out Tyranitar for Primal Groudon can work, but it does come with a set of problems. Primal Groudon doesn't tank special hits quite as well as Tyranitar, it has no good way to punish ghosts, and it restricts its teammates from running hazard control moves if it wants to beat Lipards. Revive Cats, Copycat, and Imposter everything you do, including Spikes and Defog, so to win, you're aiming for maximum spikes up on both sides, with no way to remove them. Regenerators don't really care about spikes, but Revive Cats do, and you can eventually claim victory by winning the Switch War. Maximum Special Bulk and the option to Terra Dark help Primal Groudon take on Cleric Shadow to some degree. 112 speed outpaces Jolly Tyranitar and Adamant Mega Tyranitar, which of course threatens Shedinja with Sandstream. Desolate Land is also nice to cancel out Sand and Hail. Primal Groudon stabs do a phenomenal job at nailing the Steel, Poison, Grass, and Electric types that threaten Terra Fairy and Terra Water Shedinja. Roar goes well with Spike Stacking, or Rest keeps you alive longer, especially against opposing Toxics. If you do want to use Hazard Control on the team, Trubbish wins against Lipards in one slot without impacting its teammates, but it's not very useful in any other matchup. Terra Steel avoids crits from Ditto, while Sticky Hold Lepaberry Recycle keeps Trubbish gunk shotting away infinitely through every single Revival Blessing. Meowstick can get the job done against Lipard teams, but it requires lots of turns spent weakening or knocking out opposing ghost types. Meowstick is then able to shut down Revive Cats with the combination of Imprison and Assist. Unable to bring themselves back to life, the Lipards eventually fall to Meowstick's Calm Mind boosted Terra Bug Signal Beams. Weezing G is a slightly more useful team member than Trubbish and Meowstick, and it can sweep Revive Cats with a Choice Scarf and its Fairy Stabs. You do want both Steam and Gleam, so you don't get PP stalled by a 5% miss or a lucky Endure Chain, and it's nice to be able to choose between damage and perfect accuracy with a Weezing in Cleaner mode. Overheat nails Steel types, and Defog is good utility especially as support for an Air Balloon Shedinja. Comfey is my personal favorite choice for the Revive Cat counter slot. Triage Draining Kiss has plus 3 priority above even Extreme Speed. Calm Mind lets Comfey survive special hits, and boosts Life Orb Draining Kiss up to one-shot levels. Defog is great general utility, and it removes the Psychic Terrain that Revive Cat teams set up to block priority. Leech Seed is useful to KO opposing Shedinja, and it seeds opponents for allies to benefit from. Or, Synthesis keeps Comfey alive longer and gets triage priority, while Leech Seed does not. All Terra Shedinja teams and variations are linked in the description, along with a paste of alternate teammates that didn't quite make the cut. Now without any further ado, let's see Terra Shedinja in action.
You've seen how the team operates, now we can dive a little deeper into counterplay. Mold Breakers can avoid Gothitelle's charm with Substitute, Taunt, or Clear Amulet, and switch their attacks up versus Disable Mega Gengar before sweeping through Shedinja and its team. Terravolt users can similarly outplay Gothitelle with Substitute and outspeed Mega Gengar with Dragon Dance. Turbo Blazers hit Shedinja's entire team extremely hard on the special side with super effective coverage that ignores Wonder Guard. Necrozma Duskmane can pose a big threat to Shedinja with Sunsteel Strike and Searing Sunrays Smash. Ultra Necrozma pops off with Sunsteel Strike, Photon Geyser, and Light That Burns the Sky. Lunala threatens Shedinja with Moongeist Beam and Menacing Moonrays Maelstrom. Adding intentional coverage moves to these Pokemon allows them to punish Shedinja's allies on the switch. It's not too hard to fit super effective coverage versus Terra Shedinja and his squad on your teams. Lots of good Pokemon like Koryodon, Zacian Crowned, Calyrex, Mewtwo, and Marshadow get strong fighting-type moves. These Pokemon make quick work of normal Terra Shedinja if preserved throughout a match. Similarly, Primal Groudon and Earthquake users are easy to fit on a team to dispose of Electric Terra Shedinja. Zacian Crowned, Ferrothorn, and anything running Iron Head, Flash Cannon, Sludge Wave, or Poison Jab can scare off Fairy Shedinja while simultaneously posing a big threat to Switchins. Ground Terra Shedinja is quite easy to target with water, grass, or ice coverage. I will point out Ferramosa specifically as having near-perfect anti-Terra Shedinja coverage, with access to Ice Beam, Low Kick, Drill Run, Poison Jab, and Shockwave for Water Terra Shedinja. Mariodon is easily the best electric Pokemon to one-shot water types. It can use Overheat to hit non-Terra Shedinja and Flash Cannon to hit Fairy Terra Shedinja. Cleric's Shadow similarly threatens Pre-Terra Shedinja with Astral Barrage, Poison Terra Shedinja with Psyshock, and any Subless Shedinja with Leech Seed. Damaging Weather is a surefire way to snipe overconfident Shedinja players. Just pick the right turn and one-shot Shedinja with your chip damage. Xerneas, Choice Scarf Kyogre, and Defensive Arceus forms are some of the best hail users in the tier. Tyranitar and Mega Tyranitar are the go-to Sand Streamers, but you can also make Sandstorm Groudon work the same way as Hail Kyogre, though you give up your primal reversion. Your own Shedinja with Safety Goggles or Terra Ground can set Sandstorm as a deterrent to opposing Shedinja. Pokemon with Toxic plus one of Roar, Whirlwind, Dragontail, Taunt, or Spite can all KO non-sub Shedinja and force sub Shedinja out. Shed Shell is the best counterplay option available against Shadow Tag, aside from your own Shadow Tag, which cancels out both trapping effects. A carefully preserved Shed Shell Ability Ignorer or Coverage Pokemon can constantly threaten Shedinja and its team throughout a match without worrying about Mega Gengar and Gothitelle. Even Shed Shell Ditto is a decent counter, able to escape from Shadow Tag after copying Ho-Oh or Tyranitar. Infiltrator Pokemon aren't necessarily the strongest in other matchups, but they do wreak havoc on Shedinja with their substitute ignoring Wisps, Toxics, and Leech Seeds. Smeargle can be a fantastic counter to Shedinja teams with the move Ingrain to ignore Ho-Oh's phasing attempts. Smeargle can baton past the Ingrain to a setup Pokemon and quickly claim a win. Smeargle and Marshadow can both threaten Cyclozar and Shedinja on turn 1 by clicking Spectral Thief, a ghost-type attack that hits through Substitute, one-hit KOing unsuspecting Shedinja. Spectral Thief also steals any stat boosts for Smeargle to baton pass off, or Substitute preemptively blocks Charms and Toxics. All Terra Shedinja counter sets are linked in the description. Overall, this gimmick has a medium setup, since you need to spend a fair number of turns setting up your Mega and Terra with Shed Tails, as well as trapping anything important with Shadow Tag in Pursuit. Terra Shedinja has a hard shutdown, though it does depend on the team you bring against it. If you only have one counter, it's likely to get trapped. If you have a whole bunch of hidden Shedinja checks, you might be able to catch it, but you still have to break through the rest of the team, which functions well even without Shedinja. This strategy has maximum potential. It's tough to break the whole team consistently, even at the highest levels of play. The top rating I achieved with Terra Shedinja was 1856 on ladder, in the top 10. Huge thanks to everyone who helped out with the creation of this strategy. I appreciate your contributions and your insight. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again next time.